initial reaction to Thor Kit. Thor's Kit. Mid game player here. After watching a couple videos about Thor, I see many people are complaining even before the tests and the multipliers are revealed. However, I think based on the way that he works, putting him in specific gear sets such as Relentless or Retaliation might create an absolute monster even with mid multipliers. He will cycle his AoEs and A1 faster to get his passive to strike. Nonetheless, we have to wait and see some testing, but I have high hopes and it looks like he can be fun to use. Hello guys, welcome. My name is Burrito. I play Raid Shadow Legends. I love my wife. And today we're gonna to be talking about a mid game's perspective on Thor's kit because we have my perspective which is that of a balls deep end gamer. We've got the perspective of all of you guys in my YouTube comments. So I kind of have an idea of what most people are feeling. And the general gist is if you're an end game player, such as myself, Thor may not be that enticing to you in the sense that you probably already have a lot of nukers. He does have an interesting mechanic with his sky rupture, with the thunder counter increasing his damage overall damage, not just his crit damage, by 30%, placing a stun and giving himself a thunder counter, as well as his A2, the Fulminous Ricochet, which attacks one enemy, and then with every subsequent hit, it charges up that damage up to 100%. He seems like a fun character. If you're wondering what is, well, what am I going to do, I'm going for Thor, just because I think he looks cool. This is a video game for me. I'm gonna do it just because I, I feel like it. If you're wondering still if you should go for Thor or not, or if you should go for Freya, there's a, a video I'll link down below where we talk about more perspectives there. But for me, at the end of the day, it's like, if I wanna do it, I'm gonna do it. You should do the same thing, assuming you can do it. On the Thor hype video, his passive does less than a quarter of the damage as his A2. The passive seems to be an AoE stun with a tiny bit of extra damage. He will need good multipliers to do anything if you put him in Relentless and Retaliation. I don't know if I would put him in Relentless or Retaliation. For most nukers, at least for me, the goal is always to put them in something like Instinct, maybe Merciless. I mean, I think he would be good in Merciless, right? What's the ignore 35% damage? Uh, defense and chance to repeat damage on an AoE. I forgot what it is exactly, but Merciless might seem good. Of course, the standard Savage, Cruel, Lethal, basically ignore defense sets. That's what I would probably go for. We've been talking about in the other video, and I've asked in the Discord, but I still have yet to get a reply, how this Thunder Counter works. Every time this champion deals damage, but we're not sure what exactly that means. Does a poison set count? Does ally attack count? So I'd like to know what the mechanics are there, and we'd like to know his multipliers. And I can't really know, and I can't share that with you guys because I don't have access to the test server. In order for me to get test server access and be able to provide that content to you guys, I need to get to 8,000 subs. So right now, I'm doing a giveaway for a forge pass when I get to 3,000 subs. So again, when I get to 3,000 subs, I think I'm at like 2,600 right now, then I'm going to be giving a random subscriber this forge pass. I'll, I'll go onto their account, I'll do it on stream, I'll buy uh, somebody a gold pass. I intend to do more giveaways like this one in the future. I'm thinking like a monthly pack or maybe a monthly gem pack. It kind of just depends on how everything rolls out. So I'm not telling you to like, I'm not telling you to subscribe. I'm just saying, hey, if we do this as a community, if we do this together, there are rewards at the end of it for being a supporter of my channel. I think people are reading his passive wrong. It's everything he deals damage, not everything he attacks. Yeah, so if he hits 10 Spiderlings with one AoE, his passive should instantly proc. Or at least I think. It's barely a difference until you hit more than five champs, which I, I think is correct, right? Because let's say you go up against Hydra, there's four heads. His A2 charges up by 25% up to 100%. It stacks up to 100%. In my opinion, 10 is way too many cycles. Even with Relentless, that's going to take forever to get a good counter. Maybe. It's per damage not per attack, so if he fights five targets with his chain skill, that's five stacks. Ultimately, it depends on if an AoE, his A3 and A2, count as one damage dealing event or one per enemy hit. For example, plus four, exactly. If it counts for each enemy, then this guy is really good for spider bosses, and worst case, he's only gonna need to cycle his skills one time to trigger the activation, each enemy. The real kick will be if poison or hex, proc hex procs count, which I speculate they will. 
Phantom Touch too, probably. Yeah, anytime he deals damage, so War Master as well. We we hope, right? Because that would make this guy absolutely busted. I I think. Like I'm 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 pretty sure if this, the way we're reading it right here, any instance, like literally any instance, including Hex and and everything, he's gonna be fucking wild. Like imagine bringing this guy into Hydra with a cursed set, and every instance of damage from that curse happens, this guy's gonna be popping off his passive, his sky rupture every single time. It's gonna be insane. At least if I'm understanding it correctly. That's just being hopeful. We can dream, right? But I don't think Polarium is gonna let that slide. Even if he comes out and he's like that, I really think they're gonna find a quote-unquote bug or fix it somehow to work as intended. Ain't no way damage from Hex is gonna proc his passive or he's going to be doing the passive AoE every 10 seconds if you put him in a curse set for Hydra and use other AoE champs. Problem is, he's built around counter-attacking but has no passive that lets him counter at all. People will use him as a blender champion, run two or three ally attacks, cycle of stuns, and damage. I would totally do this too. I feel like he could be very good, but we'll have to see some play tests. His passive says every time he deals damage. That's a bit vague to me. If we look at his A2, it's an AoE, then individual hit on each enemy. If he's against wave of five, and the AoE counts as five, then each individual hit counts as another five that would trigger the damage and the stun. With reset shenanigans, you could keep doing this, which is pretty powerful for wave clearing, still probably not as good as Armand's. If the AoE of the A2 only counts as one, it's definitely less good for waves. And again, like we just don't know until we see everything. There are so many questions and the ambiguity, I think is what's leaving the player base somewhat divided and unsure about the reaction to Thor's kit. I feel like this guy's A2 wrecks UDKs in arena because he directs single target damage so UDK should get hit all four times. He's negative affinity, a tanky UDK will eat those attacks. He was this close. Um, no, I didn't I didn't ever think he was gonna wreck through UDK. I think he's a great champ, but his skill set seems divided between support and nuke. And I think that's the other thing, right? He's kind of weird in the sense that he just, He's trying to do both things, that, and we said it in the other video, it seems like they tried to build a nuker, but a nuker that requires accuracy is kind of, we don't want to build a nuker multiple ways. We want somebody who just does their one job pretty well. On that note, I think someone brought up a really good point in my last video talking about people complaining about Thor not being, I guess, that great. They were saying like, everybody always wants whenever Polarium offers or introduces or does a, does a fusion or, or anything like this, they always want a nuker to be able to do Georgia level damage. And they always want AOEs on everything and they want ignore stone skin and, and everything. And I was like, you know what? That's right. We always want that kind of thing. Is that inherently wrong? I don't think so. But he made me realize that, yeah, I don't think that we can expect that sort of thing from Polarium. Even Polarium themselves says that, hey, not every champion we release can be game breaking and game changing. And the guy who commented on my YouTube video was talking about power scaling. And I was like, you know what? That makes sense. And I actually agree with this because here's the thing. The examples he gave was like Georgid hitting at the Georgid level or Trunda in Hydra. So if everybody hits at like the Georgia Taurus level, then they're going to expect and the power is going to scale to that level and anything less than is going to seem like absolute shit, even if they're pretty solid. For example, Thor, because Trunda is doing Trunda damage in Hydra, we all want and expect a champion that does Trunda level damage, but that can't be the case because of power scaling and, and the value in certain champions. And there's so many different ways we can go about this. But yeah, I thought that was a pretty interesting comment. So Thank you for sharing that comment. I think it was Stefan or Darren. I, I read it. I read so many guys, uh, so many of your guys' comments, and I I'd usually do them in like one session and try to get to all of you guys at the same time. One of them was like in Hydra. I'm pretty sure it was Darren now. In Hydra, his decreased res isn't going to be able to do much because once you destroy that head, it comes back and the resistance is back. I thought that was a good point. I didn't think about it. I should have said that. I think that would have been a noteworthy thing to point out. Amius is probably the, the most prominent thing I can think of right now. I'm pretty sure that Polarium is going to release newer content that is, I don't want to say going to require decrease res, but I mean, they have the debuff decrease res. I think having a champion that permanently decreases res might be a good option to have. Thor looks like a super fun champion to mess around with. I don't think he's going to be an absolute top tier nuker class because of the usual suspects, stone skin and sheep. And in Hydra, he's risking turning himself into the mischief target with two self buffs on top of building an accuracy if desired, 
which is kind of a weird thing. It's freaking Thor. It feels like he should be way better than some random Nutcracker, but with this kit, I don't see him reaching that kind of raw damage S-tier nukers reach. That being said, there is some fun potential here. And again, right here, there's some fun potential. It's a fucking game, right? Just have some fun. Currently, I'm running Vlad as my main nuker in Arena. The fun thing about Vlad is that he can play the standard nuke role and just melt faces, but backs that up with destroy max HP on his A1. If an Arena fight goes long, Vlad can grind down opponents. Thor has some of that potential as well, destroying resistance, pushing back turn meter, a slow, and his stuns if fights go along with his kit. Which, by the way, I don't think he's gonna, especially in arena, and I could be wrong about this. Well, I mean, some like his thunder counter, for an example, right? Because a lot of arena fights don't honestly last that long, unless you're just in one of those pvp arena fights where that does happen but i think it's going to take way too long personally i'm not looking at thor in the lens of using him in arena i might try him out just because it's fun but i don't know that i'm gonna really work him in pvp like that we're never getting another trend in this game i guess i feel like this is the third fusion in a row that sucks okay damage dealer weird kit needs accuracy freya also sucks ass multi hits cancel out her passive the whole as guardian is a the the whole are the in the whole as guardian event is a flop aside from Odin to some degree. Yeah, I just saw somebody else talking about Freya in the video where I go over Freya. This was actually something that I talked about. I I was I was talking about this multi hit issue, right? Her her passive at the time, a lot of people were saying, and again, you know, we don't know, but a lot of people were arguing that no Freya's passive is going to delay. A death keep somebody alive your nuker alive and then heal and they were saying that multi hits aren't going to affect your damage dealer because for an example your georgian will survive one hit then heal and then if he can survive the next hit then he's going to be able to get that instant turn or something like that this was proven to be wrong and i'm not throwing this in your guys face or whoever that was this is one of those things it could have gone either way right because a lot of the time we just don't fucking know right so it could have gone the other way i could have been wrong and then people could have said like hey burrito you're wrong and then i would have been like ah, well shit, i was wrong I, I always say that and if i'm wrong i'm wrong and i'll admit ridiculously underpowered my only problem with him is purely from a great uh, game design and balance standpoint his a3 permanently decreasing res by 50 percent is too strong it reads very much as polarium just abandoning the decreased res debuff they've added more and more champs lately who ignore a percentage of target res and now thor just does a much better version of it these champions were already pretty weak in the game this just further pushes them into a power crept and abandoned territory the champs that weren't mythicals weren't being used before but they're really going to be forgotten once thor does a better job it's an interesting take my thoughts were that it's kind of bad it's only 10 percent every three turns he takes where is that useful well, we don't know yet. If you're relying on it, then you won't be landing any debuffs for a while, which seems like a fair trade, I guess, but the only place I can think of it being useful uh, are places that his passive isn't going to work, i.e. bosses. I just don't know where you'd want someone like this. His A3 is going to take a long time to take effect, meaning you either don't need it at all or are not landing debuffs for a very long time. His passive needs him to take three turns to activate it, assuming it's per enemy taking damage, which seems right. And Arena typically doesn't last that long while bosses are immune, so his A2 is random, which isn't great, and it says it doesn't work on bosses, so where do I use it? The only part that doesn't work on the bosses is the ignore unkillable and the ignore block damage, so Odin, basically, for now. He's likely a hard spider pharma or a hydra champ. Still, until the attack multipliers are out, it's hard to judge.